This video is an explanation on how to run a submaximal cycle ergometer test to determine predicted VO2 max. First of all, you'll need your participant information, being their name, their age, their weight, their gender, and their age predicted heart rate max, and then 85% of that age predicted heart rate max. You also need to know how to set them up on the cycle ergometer and have their predetermined seat height and the pedals adjusted for them. In order to make sure the participant can safely perform this test, you'll need their resting heart rate and blood pressure measures, ensuring that neither of these exceed the cutoffs to safely begin the test. The way this test is set up is that participants progress through several increasingly difficult workloads until they reach their 85% of their age predicted heart rate max. Throughout the test, we change the workloads by monitoring resistance and cadence. Cadence stays steady throughout the test, and in this case, it's 50 revolutions per minute. If resistance changes, then that is what's changing the workload. At each minute of the test, we monitor the participant's heart rate and their rating of perceived exertion at the end of each stage. Participants must achieve steady state heart rate before moving on to the next workload. Steady state is defined as beats per minute no greater than five beats per minute between the second and third minutes of the test. If there is a difference between the second and third minutes greater than five beats per minute, in heart rate, then what you would do is take a fourth minute of the test, ensuring that at that point you have a steady state heart rate and there is not a difference greater than five beats per minute between the average of the second and third minute. As depicted here, the first stage is what determines the trajectory for the rest of the test. The participant pedals at 25 watts or what is 0.5 kps of resistance at 50 rpm. They pedal at this workload for three minutes taking their heart rate at each minute of that workload. The participant's heart rate in the last minute of the first workload determines which column they fall into. Please note that they remain in this column for the remainder of the test. They do not switch between columns. For example, if the person's heart rate in the first workload, the last minute of that first workload is less than 80 beats per minute, that their second workload would be 2.5 kp or 125 watts, their third would be 3 kp, and their fourth would be 3.5. They would at no point move to the other workloads or the other columns where they change to 2 or 2.5 kp, changing their trajectory throughout the test. In order to begin the test, have the participant properly situated on the bike and begin pedaling. Once they start pedaling, take note of their RPM using the display. You can see that it's the top row here. If they're pedaling too fast, instruct them to slow down until they can maintain a steady cadence of 50 RPM. They should be able to maintain this RPM with zero resistance on the bike, but if they pedal too slow, you have to instruct them to pick their speed up, again, getting to that 50 RPM. It is very important that they maintain a steady cadence throughout as to not adjust the workload throughout the test. Once they can maintain that steady cadence, you'll apply the 0.5 kp of resistance to begin the first workload. Now our three minute timer counts and the person pedals throughout the test, taking their heart rate each minute and writing that down. Please note that for the sake of time, the middle sections of each workload have been sped up in this video. Now at the end of the third minute of the workload, you'll take the participant's heart rate, comparing it to the second minute heart rate. If it is within five beats per minute, you'll write that down and end this stage, moving on to the second stage. Don't forget to have the participant rate their perceived exertion and also write that down. You can see here that the workload stayed at 0.5 kp in the cadence at 50 rpm. The participant's heart rate increased but did reach steady state between the second and third minute of the test. So we'll be moving on to, you can see here that the resistance stayed steady throughout the stage at 0.5 kp, as well as the cadence at 50 RPM. The heart rate did move up, but stayed within steady state between the second and third stages, no more than five beats per minute difference. 
resting at 85. We then use that 85 in the corresponding chart to determine the participant's workload for the remainder of the test. We'll then increase the workload to the appropriate 2kp, which corresponds to what we just marked out on the chart. Again, ensuring the participant maintains the cadence of 50 RPMs, you can proceed through this workload, again, taking heart rate every one minute and taking RP at the end of the test. Again, just like before, we're taking our heart rate in the third minute, comparing it to the second minute, and seeing if it is greater or less than five beats per minute difference. If it's less, we can then move on to the next workload in the column that we designated. You can see here that the participant's heart rate went from 95 to 115 and actually went down a little bit to 112. That's not uncommon when a person reaches steady state that they hover around the same heart rate. Again, we're staying in the same column that we did before, increasing the resistance for the next workload to 2.5 kp. When we took our heart rate at the end of the third workload, we can see that the participant did achieve steady state between the second and third minutes, so we can move on to our fourth workload as they are not yet at their 85% of age predicted heart rate max, increasing the workload to 3 kp. It will become apparent that the participant starts to fatigue significantly at some point. Taking their heart rate at the third minute of this test, we can see that not only have they achieved steady state, but they are indeed above their 85% age predicted max heart rate uh, at 168 beats per minute. At this point, we terminate the test and let them know that they can begin cool down. At 
that point, you then loosen off the resistance back down to 0.5 kp. So they're not completely spinning freely, but they do have some resistance to work out the lactic acid in their legs that they've built up, allowing them for a full three to five minute cool down before a passive cool down again of another three to five minutes before their heart rate falls back below 100 beats per minute. Finally, once you're done your tests, what you'll need to do is utilize these three sets of equations to determine the predicted VO2 max. Essentially what these are doing is determining the power output at each workload, utilizing the watts created from the resistance and their revolutions per minute, divided by the person's kilogram body weight. Then what they're going to do is determine the slope of the line, utilizing both those two points and the two points of steady state heart rate at each of those stages. Finally, that line gets extrapolated up and you use, utilize the participant's max heart rate at the intersection point with that line to determine their predicted VO2 max. Finally, what you'll do is take that participant's predicted VO2 max value, look it up in the chart with their appropriate age to find their appropriate and corresponding health benefit rating.